This is the Rexmio 2-gun biometric safe. And biometric safes have gotten much more affordable lately, but the question remains, do you get what you pay for? Are these biometric safes safe? Do they open when you need them to open? And would you trust a biometric safe from a company you've never heard of? These are all questions we're going to try to answer on this episode. Okay, whoa, this is heavy. This is the Rexmio Biometric Safe. And this thing is whoa, about 15 pounds, so definitely heavy duty for a portable biometric gun safe. So let's take a look at what you get inside of the box here. All right, we have our little owner's pamphlet manual showing you how to use it, so definitely read your manual. And we have here, ah, we have our keys, set of keys and batteries, and we have our safe itself. Ah. And it is definitely most of that 15 pounds, all of that 15 pounds is in here. So. Oh. Take a look at this bad boy. All right, so we have our manual lock and we have a USB-C uh, port that's to power and recharge the unit, or charge the unit, power the unit uh, as a backup in case the batteries die. You can just plug in a USB-C, which is a nice feature to, uh, to uh, work the biometrics if the batteries die. We have our biometric controls there. And I think we're going to need our keys to open up the first time. So let's do that. There we go. And inside, we find a nicely padded interior. This is foam padding here. Ooh, and a nice pneumatic door hinge. That's nice. So this is definitely uh, a nice, nicely constructed safe here. We've got some openings here so you can run this cable through if you want to secure it uh, to um, um, your truck bed or, or wherever you're going to be putting this or inside of your house if you're going to have it out in the open. You can also secure it through these holes. You can screw them into a table or a wall or wherever you want to, to secure the actual safe if you don't want to just leave it loose and portable like this. So let's put some batteries in here. Got our battery door. Have that lit up here. Long press on the check mark to enter administrative password. So for the administrative password, it's... Please enter six to eight digits admin password followed by confirm key. Please input again. Yeah. Successful. Okay. Please add administrator. So we're just going to add. Please input again. 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 Successful. All right, let's try that out. See if that if that works. I'm gonna put my thumb on there. Yeah, that. Let's see if it. If Already it'll... unlocked. Nope. Nope. Let's try our left thumb. Nope. Let's try that again. Okay. Let's try our right thumb again. All right, that worked. Should these fail, you have these. Now, I know some folks out there are saying, well, I will never trust a biometric or I would never trust an electronic lock. Well, that's fine. Just think of this as a standard key lock that also happens to have backup, a backup biometric lock. Think about it that way. All right, so let's go over, quickly look over some other features. I won't go into them in too much depth, but it does have a volume control that lets you turn off that voice here when I've just done that so that it doesn't make 
that automated electronic voice when it opens up so it can be a little more discreet when opening it. It does have a uh, pick-proof alarm so if somebody tries to lock pick that the alarm will go off. It also has a low power alarm should the battery power the batteries uh, start getting a little low it'll um, it'll alert you to that so that you can replace the batteries or power it through that USB-C port there and it has instructions on how to delete and add users and change the password so that's useful. Um, Let's go and see how much space you have in here. And we have seven inches tall by a little over 11 inches wide in internal space. Now there is that extra space over here, but you it needs that for this pneumatic arm to sit in there when closed, so don't put anything in there. But let's, uh, let me give you a practical demonstration of what you can fit in here. Now, both of these uh, these pistols have been unloaded. They are safe. There's no bullets in the chamber, no mag loaded in. So we can get a full-size Glock 17 in there, along with a full-length 1911, again, unloaded. And this has a target slide on there, in case you're wondering what kind of 1911 that is. That is for uh, rimfire target shooting. And it has enough space that you can put in some spare mags uh, as well as uh, any other valuables you want to put in here. So that just gives you an idea of the internal volume, the internal space that it has. Certainly plenty of room for, for other things um, should you not need to put a firearm in there, but it is plenty secure for that. So that is good. And again, um, you can access this either through your number code. Oops, that didn't go through. Okay, well, that's a little worrisome, again. Okay, I figured out what the issue was with the uh, combination lock. There's a little bit of a delay when you're pressing the buttons. You just might need to make sure that it has, it has registered your press. And the problem is that if you turn off the audio cues on this, the little voice, you won't hear those little, uh, well, you won't hear the audio cues. For example, here. opens up. But if you do it too quickly, Already unlocked. well, and then you got the voice. If you do it too quickly, like I did, so you need to hear each of the little tones to know that it's registered your press. The problem is if you want to turn off the voice, you're also turning off the audio cues. So. That's sort of uh, the, the trade-off there. So I think from a, from a user standpoint, I think that uh, Rexmio should rectify this, uh, have a way to just turn off the voice and not necessarily the little tones. Um, but you know, that's just me. So I'm doing some additional testing of this biometric sensor. It definitely will not activate with my left hand. left thumb, or any of my other fingers for that matter. And you must be sure that you have a solid coverage of your primary finger over the sensor. If you do a, a partial off, it won't activate. And if you get too much on the side, it won't activate. You've got to have a, a solid, consistent now, I know if you're thinking if, uh, you know, you may not be, uh, not be able to think clearly when you're under stress. Like if I was stressed, I'd be pressing, 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 just keep it solid on there. But if you're really under stress, use these as your primary, don't use this, okay? If you can't find your keys, this is your secondary. And that's how I would roll, you know, because two is one and is one is none. The Rexmio 2 gun safe. What do I really think? Well, I think it is a robust design with a generous interior that has biometrics that actually work. It doesn't open for any other finger than the ones that you program in. There are some areas for improvement. I'd like to see a volume control that allows you to turn off the voice yet keep the keypad beeps at a lower volume. I wonder if there's a way to update the firmware through that USB port. 
I hope Rexmail sees this video and leaves a comment and tells us if that was possible. And I wish this unit had built-in illumination, you know, a red LED light that would illuminate the interior when it opens. That would be a nice touch. But apart from that short wish list, this gun safe has the features that a typical gun owner or homeowner would want in a gun safe. If you're interested in picking one up, I'll include product links in my full written review on my blog, MoondogIndustries.com, so check that out. And if you liked this video, if you got something out of it, please hit the like and subscribe buttons, and share this with your shooting buddies. Thanks for watching. Moondog, out. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, please share it on forums, Facebook, Reddit, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, MeWe, whatever social media you're on. And if you want to see all of my videos, check out MoondogIndustries.com.